if we want to start learning how Git really works internally, we need to know a little bit about some internal commands called plumbing commands. These commands are not meant to be used in your everyday work, but nevertheless, they are really useful to know when you first move to Git, just to understand how Git works internally and have a better understanding on how you can take your Git skill to the maximum level. The very first command you should know is the get init. I'm running this command inside an empty folder and it actually initializes an empty git repository in this current folder. Actually, we have a new folder called .git that contains the git database, but Visual Studio Code is not showing because it is configured to hide this internal directory. If you open user settings and look for files exclude, you can verify that Visual Studio Code is automatically configured not to show you any files that inside .git folder. And this is a good behavior because you're not supposed to look into this folder and you're not supposed to fiddle to manually touch file inside this folder. Nevertheless, with this course, it is important to understand how Git works internally, so I'm going to remove this exclusion so Visual Studio Code is able to show me what's inside a .git folder. This folder actually contains all the Git database, and it's meant not to be touched in real scenario. But for this course, you are going to understand what's inside this folder. The first nice folder I want to show you, it's objects. It's the real database of objects stored inside the Git repository. But what's an object? Basically, Git take any stream of byte, any files, and compress, put a header on it, and store in the objects folder with a special name. Let's see an example. Let's create a first simple file like Hello, get in readme markdown file. Now I have this new file. So if I'm going to list the file in my directory, I have this readme markdown and I can issue get hash object and I can ask get to hash readme markdown and I add the dash w option to have git write this object inside the database. Actually, a couple of things happens. First of all, Git returns me a nice uh, SHA1 hash of the file. This will be the name of the file. As you can see, this actually creates also uh, another subdirectory in the objects folder. If I'm clicking on this, folder, you can see that the first two characters are the first two characters of the hash. And that's uh, done to avoid polluting a single folder with thousands of files. And now we have the files that whose name is the rest of the SHA1 value. And if I click on the file, the file is going to be binary because actually Git takes the content of the file, readme.markdown, and prepend um, a header, then hash, calculate the hash of the file, and then compress everything with gzip and store inside the object folder. This is the very first plumbing command I'm, I'm going to show you. The command that actually takes a single file, a single stream of bytes, and store inside the Git internal database. As you can see in this first example, Git, it's nothing else than um, object database capable of storing binary blob of files, bin binary blob of bytes, files, inside an internal database using uh, the nice trick of 
creating the name of the file with the hash of the content. So in case of file system corruption, Git is capable of knowing that the file is corrupted because when it's going to extract the gzipped file, even if it, the extract is successful, it will then recalculate the hash, and if the hash is, does not correspond to the name of the file, some corruption happened. So that's the very first command, git hash object, and it is used to store binary blob in database. And as you see in the subsequent videos, this is the very base uh, function that gets used to do almost every command.